Good afternoon and welcome to AgriFood Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is Tom Bunn. I'm an associate on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you all to our discussion today. AgriFood Conversations is all about driving innovation in food and ag. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme is nutrient efficiency. And on today's call, we are joined by Barry Goldman, the CEO of Pluton Biosciences. Pluton Biosciences technology is able to quickly and inexpensively tap in, into the diverse world of bacteria, fungi, and viruses to discover next generation products for ag, bioremediation, energy, and pharma. It can discover novel microbes to use in new natural products in months, not years, and at a fraction of the cost expended by current laboratories. Each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We've invited you to this call because you are some of the smartest, most talented people in Pluton's market. You're potential customers for their products and services. You've built a similar company, or you have unique expertise and understand the challenges and opportunities that Pluton may face. Before we get started, we have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a couple of moments to answer. And if you process comments while the poll is running, uh, we are not soliciting investment in any way whatsoever. This presentation is to provide information to help Pluton find customers, mentors, or other strategic relationships that can help them grow their business. Secondly, you can use the Q&A box to ask a question at any time, and we will answer as many questions as time allows at the end of the presentation. Just a brief note on that, we, you can also raise your hand at the end and we can unmute you and you can ask Barry a question directly. Finally, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for replay. So with that, I am pleased to introduce Barry Goldman, CEO of Pluton Biosciences. Thank you very much, Barry. Thanks, Tom. Hi, so uh, Barry Goldman, Pluton Biosciences. I have a background in microbiology and computational biology. After my uh, PhD and postdoc, I went to the Monsanto company for about 18 years, leading groups in data science, in in tech scouting and, uh, and microbiology. I was recruited by Indigo Ag in the fall of 2016 to help build out their discovery platform and research platform. And I worked with them for about three years. And that was kind of a wild ride. And uh, about two years ago, almost exactly, I, I left there to uh, really build out uh, Pluton. And, and we're powered by the idea that there are over a trillion species of microbes in the world. And if you can imagine it, a microbe already does it. And so when you think about microbes, you know, huge global problems have been solved with just a few microbes, you know, in antibiotics and transgenics and diagnostic, just a few microbes have been able to do revolutionary things in therapeutics and transgenics and diagnostics. And so, and so that was over a hundred years ago, we've been working with these microbes. And, and in the meantime, science is now, to the point of sequencing a thousand novel microbes every single day. And so that huge onrush of, of, of data is coming forward, yet it's been a while since we've really sort of leveraged that piece. And so in the last 20 years, you know, CRISPRs have sort of come along, but you have to imagine there has to be dozens more in this space. If, again, if you can imagine it, a microbe already does it. And so what we're focusing on is how can we use that and deploy that first in the ag space? And so we have a process that tries to identify microbes in a really fast way. And it's the process of trying to say that traditionally we'd look at one microbe at a time. That's kind of looking at the yellow pages, you know, looking up, I need crop protection. Well, I'll look up bacillus. Instead, you can do it with a much faster search engine. And I don't have the time here to go into that, but just say that we look at hundreds of microbes when others are looking at a single microbe at a time. And so we do it in a population-based method. And what are we trying to do in that? Well, the first of those is looking at carbon sequestration. So let me talk a little bit about that. We know this is a huge problem. As of this year, as of 2021, we're looking at about 416 parts per million of CO2. In addition, methane is a problem. In addition, nitric oxide is a problem. There are a lot of problems associated with, with unsustainability with greenhouse gases. 
On the other side, we also know that, that, that growers are not making a lot of money. Well, what if there was a way to apply both together to increase grower income and take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere? And there is a way to do that. Plants already do that today. And so we were just thinking about applying this methodology to approach that idea. And, and so the question is, well, how would growers make money in this space? Well, there's a nascent carbon market. And in fact, the first growers have started being paid on this. And if you look at almost every day, you're almost seeing something else where somebody else, some larger company is trying to get into this space to figure out how do we mitigate this carbon? Do we grow trees? What are ways that we can take that CO2 and take it out of the atmosphere and do something better with it? You know, do something better th than what we're doing. And that's, that's the idea of going from carbon neutral to carbon negative to start having an impact. Because if we keep secreting carbon dioxide, we're gonna have to be negative in some way to keep pulling it back out. And the latest IP, IC, IPCC report said that we really are moving to this in a, in a very fast way. And, and even the president says we, we can use climate change and we can use it to create jobs. And farmers planting cover crops so they can reduce the amount of carbon dioxide in the, in the air and get paid for doing so. So that, that nascent market is growing. And so what's the way to do that? Well, there are always things called cover crops. They're plant cover crops. They take CO2, nitrogen out of the atmosphere and put it in the soil, but they're very expensive. It costs the growers quite a bit of money to deliver on those carbon products. It costs about $40 an acre. It's very expensive. You need extra equipment. And so it's only adopted by about 5% of the marketplace, about 15 million acres of the 300 million acres that's out there today. And so we said, what if we can come up with something that's essentially a cover crop that might be a lot less expensive to deliver? And so we came up with the idea of a microbial cover crop. That is microbes. And in fact, microbes are like little plants. Some microbes will photosynthesize and fix nitrogen and take CO2 and N2 out of the atmosphere and put it into the soil. And if you grow them up, they're relatively cheap and growers already have the equipment to take that out of the atmosphere and put it into the soil. Not a lot of extra work. And now the price to enter the carbon market becomes approachable. So that's what we're trying to do. So the idea is, and today we already have eight product candidates that were already ready for testing that have take that takes CO2 and N2 out of the atmosphere and put into the soil. We believe that we can do this with 300 onto all 300 million acres of US row crops and pull out 1.7 tons of carbon in the, in the, to the atmosphere and put it into the soil. It's tons of CO2 out of the atmosphere, put it into the soil. And right now, companies like Indigo are paying $15 per ton per acre in these carbon credits. E even today, that can impact roughly 5% of the CO2 that's going into the atmosphere. If done on a global basis, that can be roughly 20 to 25% of the total CO2. And we can do it for not a lot of money. Now, we're getting started in this process by, by, the, Bayer, by the Bayer company. And, and they're actually paying us to get started. We own all of it. It's non-dilutive funding to get started. We started with 56 populations and just sort of how you can see how it kind of works. We take these populations, just environmental samples, and we grow them with light, with CO2 and N2. And you start with this relatively complex population. And as you grow it, new passages through there, you actually, it becomes more and more refined to end up with very few organisms that can do what we need them to do. And we can sequence all of them. And this just shows you some of the data we have. We have showed two different product candidates. And again, these are populations. And what you see on the y-axis is 25 different strains. We haven't elucidated them for you, but we're just telling you there are 25 strains. And on the, on the y-axis, on the x-axis, we just show what happens over each of these populations. And again, we've sequenced deeply each of them. And so you would see what looks like at the beginning is some things that didn't exist, for example, in that for top box there that didn't exist or a very low concentration at the beginning become to dominate the population. And so you're looking for things that dominate the population, trying to understand what's doing that. And I can tell you that's a photosynthetic organism. And then things toward the bottom in the lower box 
started relatively high in the population and relatively disappeared. And so when we look through there and we say, what's in this? Well, it's a group of organisms that are photosynthetic and it also fixes nitrogen just like bradyrhizobium does with soy. And so now we have this population of organisms and what we're looking for is through these final passages, does it stabilize? And do we now have a stable population? As you can see, when you look at, as you look at those two from in, in the last two columns, they're getting relatively stable. We have metrics to measure how stable that is using how diverse the, the population is. And so we're moving rapidly toward that. And we're, when we were handing and we're at least sharing with, with Bayer that we have, have completed this and we are now in the process soon of working with them to go through the next stage of the of this agreement. And so that's where we are on this space. We also have a pesticide product. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that. And the idea is how do we replace the chemistries where we're seeing resistance? That is, how do we leverage these trillion species of microbes to find the next thing like Bacillus thuringiensis? We can't believe there is only one BT in the world. And so we just have a relatively simple pi pipeline to figure out how to find things. As you see the two boxes on the left, you just tap them on the side. And if they move, they move into a new box. And if they're dead, they don't move. You know, very, very simple assay. We are finding novel things in that space. The things that are well-known are Bacillus thuringiensis. It's a hundred billion dollar organism that transformed Monsanto company. And, and things like E. coli that pretty much everybody knows and loves. And then our organism is separated by roughly 2 billion years of evolution. And in ways that you can imagine, when you find something novel, we found dozens more of this organism and 80% of them, and they're relatively rare. They show up in about one in 5,000 different species. Yet 80% are insecticidal. So we believe we can find that next BT that next $100 billion organism in the way we're finding these things. There's almost no patents on that. And if you think about this in a methodology is that you can think about the discovery year. BT was identified in 1901, our organism about two, three years ago. Are they both insecticidal? One has its all of activity by genes which have been cloned. We also have genic activity that kills. And so we do responsibility to clone this out but we also have small molecules and we know it makes three and we know they're highly unique. Our mass spec data shows that it appears to be new and that's work we did with the Danforth Center. And this Bacillus thumbergensis has been highly, highly characterized. Every company in the world works on this just about. And so everybody knows about it and everybody's shooting in the same netting, you know, fishing from the same stream. We were looking in a space that's entirely novel. There are many patents on that space. We are looking in an entirely new space for this, and we've just filed our first patents on it. We are working relatively rapidly. We have a first carbon product that we're working with. We have a second carbon product that was is moving forward. It's for no-till products. It is a yield product. It's not necessarily a carbon product, but it's a yield product to uh, to degrade the the till the no-till fields and put more carbon and uh, increase the yields and depress the the uh, the uh, yeast of the fungi that stay in the residue. And then we've also working through a carbon protection product. We have raised about uh, 2 million rounds in our seed round, which was a note round. We're just about to close a, a priced round with two venture firms. We believe we discovered a new class of small molecules in the next two months. We'll have a better handle on whether that's true. And we have candidates ready for carbon nitrogen products. And we've got some great partners in this space, including buyer. And with that, I will try and be done. I think that's my 15 minutes and I'll be open this for questions. Excellent, thank you, Barry. We now have time for, for some Q&A. Best way to do that, as I mentioned, is to is one of two ways. You can raise your hand and, and I can unmute you or feel free to type in a question after clicking the Q&A pane at the bottom of your Zoom app. But Barry, I guess to get things started, you know, you're, you're close, you're still in validation of your farthest along microbes. Can you talk to me a little bit about how, you know, you think about different soil types, different, you know, different effects you're seeing depending on what microbes are existing and maybe geographies or latitudes or 
kind of how you kind of standardize the, the results? Yeah. So right now everything is, is in the lab, you know, yeah. so we, we have not gone to the field with this. And uh, so the plan is to go into the field early next year with, uh, with the carbon, with the carbon play. So that, and that will be a soil amendment. And so we expect to see stuff in the field and we're hoping to get to uh, at least three different locations next year, knowing that you really have to get to more really to really understand what you're seeing. We do expect to see impacts of soil and geography. We absolutely expect to see that. On the other hand, most of what we're trying to put out there is going to be in the top centimeter of soil. So basically you're looking at substrate. And so the, the geography, we expect to be more associated with weather. And that, uh, you know, if, 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 the, if the ground's entirely dry, it's going to be tough to grow a lot. But if there's at least some moisture in the soil, we expect to be fine. On the other hand, we don't expect these to die if they're out there on the soil. And so as soon as you do get moisture, we expect the microbes to start up again and start doing what they need to do. Given the amount of population we're putting into the soil, we don't expect that what, what is already there to have a dramatic impact. But again, until you get out to the field, you, you can make all the hypotheses you want, but you have to see stuff in the field. That's, that is the only way to really know how effective what you're trying to do is. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so assuming you get fantastic data, how do you, how do you go to market in this, this climate with, you know, a lot of microbial products? I think, you know, there's increasing number of products, increasing maybe farmer skepticism or, or just inundation on the grower side with, with so many products that could save in, in theory, based on the marketing, you know, just an absurd amount of, of yield or inputs. The first one is not a yield play. It's a carbon play, sure, yeah. right? So it's, so it's, it's really trying to address a different market entirely. It, it, if, you know, so we expect that the, well, A, we're trying to work with buyer on this. At least uh, that's the, that's the initial plan if, if a buyer re-ups with us. And, uh, and we're part of their sustainability group. And so they're thinking very hard about how do they, how do they have a, a positive impact on the planet? And so we're, we're very happy to be partnering with them is that with that, they have the ability to kind of bring that out and to find partners to help show the value of it. I think we do understand at some level that this is, has to be a carbon market play and that if there's, if, and it's with any product, if the growers can't make money on this, you know, it's really hard to sell something. You know, you can't, you know, you can't, yeah, I, I remember talking to a grower about, this is a while ago, talking to growers about uh, carbon products and, and why they were adopting certain carbon practices. And he basically looked at me and says, says, well, wait a minute, let me get this straight. You want me to feed the world and you want me to fix climate change and you don't want to pay me for this. And, and that conversation had like a, a huge impact on me. And, it's, and so when we thought about products. We said, okay, the product has to deliver. And so what I'm trying to do is drive that cost down as low as I possibly can, make that input so easy. He, the grower does not have to buy more equipment. They can basically, the plan is to put this in a chemistry tank and just go over the field and, and, at that point, we, we are, and all the numbers say that there's going to be a relatively huge carbon market in the north of $38 billion by the end of this decade. You know, so today it's relatively low, but in four to five years, we expect to be quite large. And for early adopters, we expect to see them take some nice share of the market. That they will be, be moving forward on that with an easy application process and a low price. Mm -hmm. What's your... You saw the uh, Indigo Growmark news yesterday. What's what's sort your sort of take on that? So you'll have to tell me. What, I'm sorry, I didn't uh, I didn't see the news yesterday on Indigo. Apologies. They they just announced a, a, a partnership. Indigo's carbon side and and Growmark. So so to me, this it's just the acknowledgement that the, the, these yep. markets are going somewhere. Indigo uh, does not have a. Indigo is doing steed treatments. We are looking at a soil amendment. So it's a different, so this is a new product itself. It's not a seed treatment. I mean, it's also a shoulder season product. So the idea is you put this on at harvest. So it actually expands the amount of, of time you can, 
deliver from your field. And so it isn't during the season, it's at, it's on the shoulder season at harvest or before, before, you know, early as you're planting. And so you should be able to be able to pull in carbon dioxide while, while this is going on. So it expand the amount of money that you can make with the assumption of a carbon market. So we, we keep seeing evidence that people are understanding the carbon market. It, it, I, you know, I have to agree that, you know, there's still risk. We're, we're not, we're not under any delusion that this is a done deal in terms of that. But I think the IPCC report that came out earlier this week that says that uh, there's some really major problems that are that are occurring, that you know we have we have effects of our climate that are human caused uh, by increases in CO2 and and methane, and uh, that we can do something about that. So we don't have to give up hope. We can do some things, and we're trying to bring. And we believe we're one of the first groups to come up with a product that is uh, that is new to address it. Great. Any questions from the the audience here? Well, Barry, how can this network, the AgriFood Extended Network, uh, help you? Well, so we're looking. So I, I could use some help in understanding all the regulatory hurdles that we're going to do. We have some, you know, we have some folks that are uh, that we're talking to now, but but more information is better. Groups that are interested in at least uh, talking to us about getting stuff out in the field and testing and seeing what what could this look like. You know, we we believe that our first that the first place we want to launch is is places like it, it, our winter our winter wheat where the margins are, are, are not as good as they could be and that we could see maybe a big difference in there. And so people who know growers in, in winter wheat, you know, we'd love to be working in that space and thinking about that. And just, you know, overall feedback. Always, uh, you know, love to hear what people are thinking. I, I, I've been out of there on farms where, where I see, saw the skepticism associated with, you know, with, with microbials. We're, we're kind of a different play, we're really trying to take things out of the field that might do something better and then concentrating them and putting them back on the field to, to make a difference. And so, you know, that's really how we're thinking about it a little bit differently. Great. Well, it's super promising and, and you tell the story super well. So Thank thanks you. again for, for, for taking some time. You know, if there's a, a good email address to, to, for people to get in touch with you, Feel free to to let people know, and then then as the recording gets disseminated, people can take you up on where you asked for some help. Yeah, well, certainly it's just b goldman at uh, plutonbio.com, and uh, anybody who wants to get a hold of me is you know I'm happy to to chat, and we're happy to talk about what we're doing and 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 why we think what we're doing is important, and and uh, why we think it, it can have a positive effect. Terrific. Yeah. Barry, once again, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on the progress and, and we'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks. Thanks so much.